because after it hits the water, you probably won't be able to hear it because the wind's blowing, but you can hear it going clank, clank, clank down under the water, so that's deep. Clank, clank, clank. There. <laughs> Can't hear it anymore. So what we got to do is this has to get cut down six feet right here and then back there three feet. So it comes in on a taper, it goes out on a 30 degree angle, uh, it goes out into the water 68 feet. So this is going to be interesting. So these are the downstream side of it. Stake without paint is the center line. So you can kind of see how it goes upstream. So what they want you to do is this has got to go on a steady downhill incline for 68 feet. But I just, I don't know how we're going to do that. I mean, every other one I've put in or seen done, you basically go in about water level and you go out and you leave it kind of flat because as the water comes across it, once the water goes across it, it changes directions. But I can also kind of see their methodology in having it angled because during low water, it's going to hit that end and push it over. During high water, as it comes up, it'll keep pushing it over. So we're going to do the best we can to build what they've got designed. But there's one here, one there, and then up there where that tree's laying in the water is the last one. Um, so this is the main channel. Up there you can see the different branches. There's a channel that comes over this way, one from over there. But this is all the water that runs through here. And right over there is where it's diving in and it has really tore off. A lot of the bank right there where I was standing they put some riprap in there and it's holding it but this out here this is really caving off good fishing hole there's been lots of fish jumping out there and you could see it tore the they had riprap here and it tore it off now the other thing you can do and then you don't need a permit stack all your rock right along the bank and then as the river comes along it falls in but the problem with that is it's going to fall off it a little at a time and probably take it away the other way you can do it is just dig a big trench and put all your rock down deep and then as it eats the bank off it comes up to the rock and it stops because your rock is deep and that's that so that's the other way you can I think you can get around the permit and all the other stuff but problem with that is is you got to dig a big trench so you're gonna have quite a bit of money into moving all this material and then I don't know what you do with the material so this one's gonna be interesting
just like yesterday And how he used to say Love, it doesn't come by by itself So easily Love, you have got to be together You see Love, it doesn't come by by itself So easily Love, you have got to be together You see My love Okay Matt's got this first barb started so we we got to get the 88 up here to bring him rocks so right now he's just taking what he's got here and throwing it out and then coming down and getting it out there so he's got him a line center line here so this is uh, what they look like and we'll go from this point out 68 feet and you can see it's already pushing the river over that way as it comes to that barb This is where the last barb's gonna go up here and there's the one he's running out right now and it is pushing the water over he gets out there 68 feet in the water and it's really going to make a big difference oh good morning man i can't believe that we're almost to october and we really haven't had the cold we usually do Boxes on steps, Mr. Mailman. Let's go look. So, got a bunch of stuff going out today. Uh, a couple of them I didn't get out because you bought a whole bunch of FW stuff. The name we shall not name. And I was out of stickers, so I wanted you to have the stickers. Uh, I put free stickers in everybody's stuff, so just remember that. You buy something, you get stickers. Um, so I got a box going to Margot Green, Lees, out of Leesburg, Virginia, John Cook out of Vallejo, California, Don Evans in Hiawatha, Iowa, and uh, William Boaz in uh, Walworth, New York. Thank you, William. Uh, yours was one I was uh, hanging on to. Uh, Garrett TB from Coopersville, Michigan. Justin Stilger from Cory Corydon, Indiana. Uh, Daniel Fett is that Fetsy from Baldwinsville, New York, and David Durr from Newmanstown, Pennsylvania. Hey, somebody said I shouldn't show your addresses, and that's probably true. It's probably really dangerous because. For those of you that bought FW stuff, I bet you people are going to come to your house and break in and steal it. So arm yourself. <laughs> I 
Anyway, thank you for buying that. Hey, I want to show you something. So in the house here, I got shirts. And I got some more hats. I'm out of stock on the black hats. So I'm going to get some more of those done. Uh, I don't have enough of everything I ordered. There must be a run on shirts, these Gildan shirts, because, man, they're, like, out of stock on everything. So what I wanted to do was restock a lot of the Anderson ones that I'm out of. And then I want to get some J Pay Dirt diesel power ones uh made and so as soon as those are done i'm going to show you those i think you'll love them so i got jake's loader over here i got scoopy over here we need it up there on the river to carry those rocks and freight them to the excavator but something's going on up under the floorboards and i'm pretty sure i know what it is um there's some hard metal lines to the neutralizer brake valve uh, over to the park brake control and a lot of times they get holes rubbed in them or they just vibrate for 40 plus years and they break so <clears throat> I gotta fix that and so I got the I wanted to use the steam cleaner but we've been having troubles with the unloader on it and I fixed I took the unloader out and uh Tore it all apart, cleaned it up, cleaned the springs, put it all back together, and it worked for a couple days or so. And then it quit. So um, I had to put a new unloader on it. You know, this has been the best dang steam cleaner ever. This is like a 1986 Hotsey. Uh, it had an 11 horse Briggs and Stratton on it that it was just plumb wore out. So. We put the Predator on it. Probably should have bought a Honda. Anyway, it's been a good machine. It's still got the original pump on it. So I've got me a new unloader in there. And uh, I've got to take it out and get it adjusted. I really need to put a gauge in here and get it set up to the right pressure. So anyway, you know, it's like things break. It's like I'm always fixing something. Uh, it's really cool when things last like this. I mean, that's just awesome. But anymore, it seems like <laughs> it just always ended up fixing something. Always, always. It just never ends. So you're probably asking how come I'm fixing Jake's loader. And, uh, Jake is not going to be able to work for a while. He's had a little accident with his hand. So he's got to get that worked on and fixed. He's going to have some recovery there. So it's down to me and Matt. And uh, we've got a whole bunch of crap to do. I sure hope the weather. I hope all of October is good and we can even go into November. But you just never know. So anyway, uh, the drone video in this video, a little bit shaky. It was... It was blowing like 25 plus miles an hour. I shouldn't have even been flying, but I did it anyway because <laughs> I wanted the footage. I need to get a new drone. Mine's really hard to control anymore and hold it steady. It just, you know, that's another thing. Electronic stuff, electrical things, it just wears out. Um, after so long, it's just kaput. So I got to get me a new one. I think I'm going to get me a Mavic. Anyway, it is a beautiful day today. You can see the sun coming up. I'm going to run off, go look at a job, and then start tackling a million other things i got to do. So uh, I get up every morning at 5 a.m. Um, it's kind of nice. It keeps you going. As long as you got stuff to do, you can't think about your problems. You can't get depressed. <laughs> you just go, go, go. So, I hope you guys have an awesome day. Hey, I'm going to stop showing you these gate posts. I'm getting banged about not having my gates done. <laughs> it's just, I have millions of things to do, and it's like, you know, 
I wanted to get those posts painted, and then I thought, oh no, if you paint them, you're gonna end up welding on there or doing something. I think I better just get them painted this weekend while I still got some warm temperatures, and then fix whatever I mess up later. But yeah, I know, I just, it's one of those things. I got, at least I got the poles in the ground, you know? <laughs> oh, and one more thing paging Danny Toner. Danny Toner, please come to the front desk. Hey, Danny, I can't find your phone number. I need to talk to you. So if you got my number, call me, text me, or email me your phone number. I want to talk to you, sir.